I've played a hand in the launch of over 100 businesses, and I have seen every showstopper that you can imagine that either sabotages or slows down your success. And it might range from anything from uh, not having your business model set up right to falling into the trap of guru worship to really not mastering selling, which is the thing that helps you get clients. And I've seen everything in between. And so as an entrepreneur, I am fiercely, fiercely dedicated to working with small business owners and equipping them with the know-how and the understanding of how a business works and how the different pieces work together without overcomplicating it. So let me put it this way. Being an entrepreneur isn't always easy, but it doesn't have to be hard. And one of the things that I see over and over and over again, people are always coming to me and saying, oh my gosh, I wasted my money on this coach. I wasted my money on this program. And it's all relative. It might be 20 bucks for one person and 200,000 for someone else. But I just keep hearing about how people feel like they've pissed their money away. And so I really believe that it's important as an entrepreneur to understand how everything fits together so that you can make wise decisions. I don't believe you can build a business. I know there are books out there on how to bootstrap and you know how to build your business with practically nothing, with 20 cents and a stick of gum. You know, Sure, I, I am not one of those people who's been able to do it that way. And so I think it's important that if you're going to build a business that you invest. And when you're making investments, that those investments make sense for you. Not because there's a sale today or there's some kind of urgency. We just get so caught up in making decisions that don't even make sense. You can always make more money, but you can't make more time. So if you're spending time focusing on something that doesn't make sense for you, you're losing time, you're losing opportunity cost. And so you do really, really, really wanna make sure that you're investing it wisely. I talked to a woman a couple of days ago and she serves entrepreneurs and her clients in a really, really unique way and she's not making any money. And what she told me is she had signed up for this program uh, about a year ago and she invested $25,000 in that program, which is a lot of money to pay to one person. So she invested $25,000 to coach with this woman to learn how to sell to corporate. And she not only invested in the program, but she also, you know, you go to meetings and masterminds and things like that. So there was all this cost of travel and all of these things that, that really added up. So your $25,000 program quickly becomes $35,000 when you factor in travel and fancy hotels and all of that. And so she gets in the program and it turns out that what she offers and what she sells really is not something that's geared towards corporate. Corporate does not need what she has to offer. It's so much better for small businesses. So she spent really $35,000 to invest in something that set her way back financially, way back time-wise, and way back, I mean, think about it. Like once you get into that and you're like, oh, wow, I really screwed up. Um, this is not where I should be. What an awful feeling. So she chalks it up just like I've done in the past. She chalks it up to, well, I met some really good people in the program. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, I've met some really good people in programs I've done where I got nothing out of the program, but I could have met really good people just about anywhere without having to invest that kind of money. So. So that's really tough. And now she's in this position where she's selling, having to sell assets to pay for her living expenses. Good night. What an awful position to be in. So now there's all, there are all of these things going on for her that just don't make sense. So that story, I think, is really important. And it's all relative. Her 25000 might be someone else's. $2,500 or $250 or $25 or 25 cents. So it's all relative, but that just gives you a sense of some of the senselessness that's going on out there. Now, I'll explain to you, just to give context to this, I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the entrepreneurial evolution because 
this is something that every entrepreneur goes through and there are four phases in the entrepreneurial evolution. In the first phase, when you start your business, you are, your motivation is really high. So I look at the entrepreneurial evolution as having four phases and there are three elements that really make it come alive. So if you think about um, your morale is one of those things. Your morale is really high. You start off and you're like, hey world, I'm here. And you're super pumped about being in business. Even though your revenues are low, that's okay. You're like, okay, well, I'm just getting started. And you're making some investments, some reasonable investments in your business. So that's phase one. And I call that um, hello world or uninformed optimism. And then what happens is you get into your business and you're going along and it's like, okay, well, I'm still not making the kind of money I need to be making. So oftentimes this is where panic spending decisions come in. And that's where you're buying every $297 program out there. You're, you might start saying, oh my gosh, I need a new website. I need to SEO my website. I need someone to write better copy for my website. Oh my gosh, I better go hire this guru. Oh, I need a new photo shoot. Oh, I better brand myself. I better do this. Joining programs just kind of crazily without really thinking about how any of it fits into the bigger picture of what you want your business to do for you. And so that panic button moment is like, I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. By the way, I've been through the entrepreneurial evolution more times than I care to count over the 12 years I've been an, a business owner. One of the biggest reasons people end up having to hit that panic button is because they weren't really clear in their business model from the get-go. And the second factor is that they're not necessarily really great at taking a potential client and turning them into a paying client. So the, the sales piece, so there's that business model piece and then there's the selling piece. Those two factors, if you don't have that container for people to come in and you don't know how to convert them once they're in your world and on your radar, it makes life really hard. And so we start spending money to put holes in places where we don't even know we have holes. And I'll give you an ex another example. Um, I was at an event a few years ago in DC and Infusionsoft was there. Great company, they have a great software platform and I use it for my, my front office and my back office. It's how I communicate with my community and it's how people pay me when they choose to do business with me. And so Infusionsoft made this really, really juicy offer and they're like, instead of $300 a month, you're gonna pay 250. And so everybody's racing around like, oh my God, I've got to get this deal. I'm going to pay my 250. And I had already known for about six months that I was going to buy Infusionsoft. And so I kind of got lucky that I was there and I was able to buy it for 250 a month instead of paying 300 bucks a month. So I'm saving $600 a year basically. So I have um, a lot of colleagues who also ran off to buy it, but they didn't implement right away. And so for every month they weren't implementing, they're paying 250 bucks to save 50. So start doing the math on that. Okay, month one, you haven't implemented. You paid, you're paying $250 for something you're not using. Month two, now you're 500 in the hole. Month three, now you're 750 in the hole. Month six, you're 1500 in the hole. I know people who bought Infusionsoft and didn't implement it for over a year. So they wasted over $3,000 to save $600. We have all done it. And it's so important to know where you are in your business. I know people who sign up for learning how to speak from the, or sell from the stage and they're not even speaking or have no intention or it doesn't make sense for their business right now. I know people who sign up for social media programs. How can I, you know, how to get clients on social media, but they're not implementing the last thing that they did. And so this cycle continues over and over. So as an entrepreneur, you have to understand where you are in the entrepreneurial evolution. You have to understand what your business model is all about, how you package and price yourself, what you want your business to do for you, and you have to know how to sell. Because what's gonna happen is in that phase two where I'm describing you hit the panic button, when that happens and then you make investments that don't work, you know, you start losing time, you start losing money, you start losing, missing out on opportunities. And it's so frustrating to see, and I've, you know, I've done it and, I, and I've, I've seen so many people fall into that trap. But what happens is if you don't pull out of it, your morale really starts to dip. 
you either run out of money or you have to, like, you have this instinct to pull back and quit spending, which is probably not a bad thing to do. And your revenues still aren't raising up the way you had hoped. And so those three things converge in what Seth Godin calls the dip. It's what I call the moment of truth because this is where you have to make a decision. Are you going to commit or are you going to concede? Are you just going to walk away and just say, you know what, I've had it. I'm, I'm done. I'm tired. I've dried up all of our nest egg. If you walk away, that's okay. It's totally okay. Um, but if you're going to stay, if you're going to commit, you have to commit to making sure that your business model is really set up to serve you. You've got to make sure that that is just locked down. You have to make sure that you know what you want your business to do for you, what your business does for others, and how you're going to package and price yourself to, to deliver that. And then you have to know how to go out and do it. And so in phase three, the reason I call it the moment of truth is because that's your, that, that's, that is your reckoning. And it's your reckoning with yourself. And that's the point where you have to say, okay, I've pulled back on spending. What am I going to invest in right now? And for and and really get clear. Not what's just in front of you at the moment, but what you really what's really going to help you bounce out of that dip. And I always like to call it you can, you know, you can bust or you can bounce. You can, you know, you can fly or you can fail. You can commit or you can see. There's so many different ways to look at it, but that is your opportunity. And some people think that the dip is the worst thing in the world. I always know and believe me, I have been in that dip more times than I care to admit. But that is also the time where I'm like, oh my God, this is my chance to be really intentional rather than reactionary. And rather than having someone just kind of skip along and say, oh, well, you should want to make a million dollars. So I'll tell you what, you pay me all this money and I'll, I'll help you make a million dollars. And then when, you're, when you haven't made a million dollars and you feel like you're closer to negative million than positive million, that's not a position you want to be in. This is your chance to get super duper intentional. And that's when we head into phase four. So you've made that investment your revenues start to go up because it's a smart investment. You make a decision, a smart decision. I'm not gonna tell you what that decision is because only you know it. Um, I'm not the type of person who's gonna project on you what that is or what you should want or anything like that. Your business has to be all about you. But the great thing is, is when you make that right decision in terms of what to invest in, your revenues go up, your morale goes up, and life is good again. So I'm bringing it back to this wasting money. Are you wasting money? Your money on your business. And I'll tell you, when you get really intentional like this, and I think a lot of people think that they are, and I know that I thought I was, and, and I had a lot of business knowledge, sales knowledge, business model knowledge. I, I had a lot of knowledge coming into this current business, the Biz Truth, four years ago, four and a half years ago. But I didn't have it kind of sorted out in my mind how all of the background I had could have helped me do it without paying someone a million bajillion dollars. And so it's really important for you at this point to just be as intentional as possible. And so again, bringing this back to how it, it helps you make better decisions about what you really need in your business and what's going to make the most sense, what's going to get you further faster and not the get rich quick, not the silver bullet. It's usually something that's not, you know, oftentimes inspiration is, you know, is really manipulation. It's just disguised as inspiration. So it's really important to be really clear on that. And what I'd like to do in our um, next video is just talk with you about how you can do a self-assessment and in terms of how to make better investment decisions as you move into phase four.